Well, the junk store's back open after a, a few months of being closed for, for the uh, virus. Um, so I went in to the shop and get some capacitors that I needed. Um, I wanted some more of these little um, mica, or not mica, but the thin, uh, what do they call these? Thin film? I don't know, polyester, polystyrene type uh, film, film capacitors. Metal, metalized film. I think that's what it's called, metalized film. Anyway, I got some values, more values that I needed. I got some uh, one, one microfarad, which is kind of one of the largest, I think, values in uh, thin um, metal film resistor, uh, capacitors. And some point ones. Uh, so I decided to uh, create another, another box here. I have a bunch of those little boxes that uh, I organize things in, and uh, I'm trying to be more organized. So I have um, uh, a box just for the audio type application capacitors, not the ceramic ones that are just generic, but these are the more more high grade. Um, so uh, 10 nanofarad, 33 nanofarad. This will be the point ones that I just bought. Here are the one microfarads. I bought some other ones on eBay. Um, I don't know what kind of uh, quality they are, but you can get a lot of these on eBay cheap. Uh, so I bought some of those. Um, when we were, when the junk store was closed, I couldn't get, couldn't get values, but I like the little square ones better. And then uh, I got some other, other just generic ones. Uh, 50 volt, uh, 25 volt ones, just for power supplies and stuff. And uh, these are, I got these at the junk store. These are Nichicon, so that's cool. I think these are Nichicon also. Um, yeah, these are Nichicon also, so cool. I think they were, they were 10 cents each, and the little ones are 5 cents each, so that's cool. So uh, I'll get around to uh, sticking this in here, but I wanted to show you another thing that followed me home, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, like I need another one. So it's uh, it's right here, I've got the side of, it, side of it off, but let me show you the front. Um, so they had these on the front desk, and I didn't know why, and uh, let, let me change the camera a bit. All right, so I was checking out, and uh, over on the desk was uh, two of these, and they are microwave power meters by, by Hewlett Packard, and these are really vintage ones. Um, probably 80s, 1980s. And um, I kind of know what's inside these things because I used to design parameters for another company, but um, was that what I was interested in was the box. I, I really like these, these boxes. And I was designing a, a, a new project and I said, well, I've learned that switching power supplies are no good for audio stuff. The noise gets in everywhere. So you need an analog power supply. So a lot of companies just use an uh, a AC uh, wall, wall adapter and just run AC into their part and, and do a strictly uh, linear power supply. I don't like those wall warts everywhere, so I wanted to put a um, transformer in mine. And it uh, turns out transformers aren't all that cheap. To buy a transformer is like $11. So. Uh, I, I made an offer for 20 bucks for this thing, so it has a transformer in it, and it has a power supply in it, so it's it's already ready to go. It's got transformer, it's got uh, plus and minus 12 volts uh, regulated, all set to go. The way that it's set up, it actually has a, a, a 50 volt supply in it to, to do the plus and minus 15, or plus and minus 12. So I think I can, kind of piggyback on another circuit to get my 48 volts off of it. So it's like all set to go. Um, and then I thought, okay, well, I got this really cool, really high quality meter in the front. That could be my VU meter. Um, so that'll be really, really cool. Have a nice, nice big one. I'll probably remove the knobs on the front for uh, uh, some other things, but uh, I think it'd be a really, really nice box. So um, I was poking around in here and uh, you can get a schematic for this thing. So um, it's interesting. The way that this thing works is it's, uh, it measures very, very, very small um, 
uh, voltages. Uh, these are very, very sensitive devices. And the way that it does that is it does a ch chopper stabilized amplifier with synchronous detection. It chops the signal at 200, 200 hertz, I believe, and then uh, sends it through AC amplifiers. And then at the very end, it changes it to DC to put it on the meter. And uh, it has some really nice filtering in there also. It has a, a two-stage two uh, uh, RC, probably a Butterworth filter or something, uh, for maximum flatness. And that's what this thing does here. It switches in uh, uh, two different size capacitors. So it has a, a very uh, fast response time or a very slow response time, depending. It goes all the way down to uh, three microwatts of power which isn't much voltage when you, when you build a detector, and it goes up to 100 milliwatts. And then it has a 50, uh, 50 megahertz, one milliwatt output for calibration. And you adjust this little knob at the bottom to calibrate the meter. And uh, you have a cal factor, which uh, the diode detectors uh, have a, a little chart on the side of them, and they say, you know, at 50 megahertz, you have a 100% of the signal, but at, at 1 gigahertz, you only have 96% of the signal, so you put this on 96. And at 18 gigahertz, you only have 90% of the signal, so you put this on 90. And so it, it fudges it, cal factor. The modern meters are, are modern meters are all automatic now, but back in the day, you had to you had to change it yourself. So anyway, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. So I'll be uh, I'll be ripping into this and. Uh, changing it a bit. So I've taken the uh, taken some of the covers off. There's a big empty space in here, uh, also for a battery, like my, my like my other meter. This one was also made for a battery. Um, this one didn't have the option, but it. I believe the circuit board actually has a battery charge circuit in it. But I think this uses a very high voltage battery, a 50 volt battery or something. I'm not something I'm interested in. But the cool thing is, it leaves you lots of room to put your own stuff in here. So that's that's cool. Uh, this little box right here is the 50 megahertz uh, uh, stable oscillator. Uh, it has a feedback loop to make the um, output constant. And um, it's a self-contained little unit, so I could probably save that, take it someplace else. Uh, let's um, let's take the take the circuit board out of this thing. There we go. So uh, I think this section over here is the power supply. So this is the uh, regulation for the plus minus twelve volts. And this box here is the chopping circuitry. So this thing I said chops at 200 hertz. And the monostable vibrator and um, uh, fancy circuit is inside here. The owner's manual says if there's anything broken in here, you have to replace the whole thing. It's not user serviceable. There's, there's nothing on the back of this thing. Um, and then over here is the actual meter itself. Um, the uh, signal comes in and it gets amplified. There's a bunch of uh, op amps and, uh, and uh, metal cans. Uh, these are all these are all op amps. And then there's some FETs that do the um, synchronous detection of the circuit. So you know you you know you're chopping at 200 hertz. You amplify that with a 200 hertz AC amplifier. And then at the very end you unchop it uh, since you. Since you have control over the chopping, you use that same signal over here to do synchronous, what's called synchronous detection, and you can re re recover the uh, recover the lost signal. And uh, yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, gold, all gold circuit boards back in the day. Very nice. Uh, the rest of the circuit here is. Uh, let me flip it over is uh, just a motherboard. I'm not sure what that IC does, motherboard, but here's the transformer. So AC goes to that to that circuit board. So down here, there's no capacitors or bridge rectifiers or anything like that. Every Everything is just AC down here. And then there's a bunch of uh, switching up here for the various, uh, various bands of the amp amplifier and filtering. And then the uh, meters inside there. 
So, like I said, I'm going to have lots of room here. Uh, it does power up. It does seem to work. And I think that I can inject a signal here on test point five. And if I inject a signal here, I believe it's it's AC up to that point, And by the time it reaches test point five, it's a DC signal. So if I inject a DC signal here, I should be able to get the meter to deflect. Um, and it should be uh, 0.2 volts max full scale. So 0.2 volts should send you all the way across the, across the thing. So I think I'll try that. Let's see if we can't, uh, see if we can't eject the signal. Okay. Uh, what I've done is I've, uh, programmed my, uh, function generator to develop a, uh, a very slow sine wave and I've DC offset it. So it's always zero to 0.2 volts. And I'm injecting that signal here at, at test point five. Uh, with this connector and I just have this hooked to the case, which I know is ground. So and if we look at the front Our meter is going up and down So the thing works well, It's probably a fine power meter, but I don't have a sensor for it and like I said, it's pretty vintage But uh, the meter works the amplifiers work. I'll be able to tie in my circuit and uh, as long as I adjust my gain such that I get uh, 0.2 volts full scale, it's not exactly 0.22 volts, um, but I think there's a knob, a, a adjustment here uh, that is the full scale adjustment for the amplifier. So should be able to either calibrate my circuit or use that to make my uh, VU meter uh, register correctly. Uh, might be able to use the scale on the front. Uh, let me let me slide this around. Make sure I don't short anything out. So the bottom scale here is in dBm, which is dB milliwatts. Uh, but uh, I can kind of use that as a VU meter, maybe. I don't know. See if the scale works out or not. Otherwise, I'll just use the use the top scale. But uh, yeah. One more project, got too many projects.